Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our board workshop. Would everyone please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And a library chair to the budget, please. <laughs> a little bit wiggly. <laughs> okay, a lot wobbly. Um, for moving on to uh, board business, the first um, action item is the school calendar second reading. And Carmel will take Thanks, care Dan. of that for us. Thank you. Uh, there are no changes that I know of from, nope, from, the, from the first reading. And again, we will start, uh, kids will start school on Thursday, September 5th next year. Um, there will be no August days for teachers um, uh, in next August. We have two weeks off for Christmas and um, we have a graduation date of Sunday, June 28th. So it's two days earlier two days than this year. <laughs> so that's a second read. Questions? Okay. Motion to accept. And that is, okay, can we have a motion to accept the second reading of the school calendar, please? So moved by Dave in a second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The second item. Brian Thomas, 2016 Capital Bed um, Acceptance. Brian is going to speak to that for us. Yeah, so what you have is it's a pretty lengthy bid acceptance because um, there's a lot of construction at both Spry and Thomas. Uh, one of the things we were concerned about going into the bid, which I think everybody on the board is uh, aware, is the recent increases for many of our uh, around the district, or not around the district, excuse me, around the county for projects. You've seen reports. Um, for increased costs associated when people go to bid. We didn't see that when we did our opening bids for the elementaries, but unfortunately we did see that a little bit here at Spry. Uh, when we opened the bid, the general con construction contract was higher than we had thought it would be. Um, so we weren't able to get all the alternates uh, into this that we wanted to, but we're comfortable with, um, we're still gonna have a great project. Uh, so. We have several contractors that are currently working with us now. We're the uh, lowest bidder uh, moving forward on both Spry and Thomas. Uh, it's people that we've worked with for many years. Uh, we're very comfortable with them, both from a buildings and grounds perspective and an architectural and construction management perspective. So um, we're ready to get going, as many of you can tell on the third floor. Uh, we're, we're very excited um, with the amount of lights that are no longer working up there and <laughs> the amount of people that are missing. And so we're excited to, to jump into construction starting very, very soon. And then you create a list of things that you can't do because of the increased price and then hope to get to them at another time? Or? So what we're hopeful to do is just um, work through these bids right here. Yeah. Uh, assess. A lot of things change. Um, right. As you're you working. Know, as you work through. Because uh, remember, Spry especially, um, we're sitting in the 1924 section oh. of the building. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of concern um, that was expressed back to us as we're opening up yeah. parts of this building that haven't been touched in quite a while. And so oh, well. <laughs> that, you know, puts a little bit of uh, scare into some of the people that were bidding. And I think we saw some of that come out because you don't know what's behind a wall until you knock it down. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So the, the kind of planning for uh, for everything there. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see as we progress what what we could do. But the um, the I guess the intent of the project that was voted on in December 2016 will still go mm -hmm. through. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Can we have a motion to accept the project bid? I'll make that. I'll make that motion. By Sue, yeah, it's second, second by Linda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is a willing donation approval. So we've all received a letter mm -hmm. acknowledging um, very generous donation and very grateful for that. Um, 
Brian, did you want to? I just want to add. To that it, a bit more? Um, okay. It seems like once a year we get a generous donation from this foundation. So I just want to mm -hmm. make uh, go on record that it is a repeat donation and uh, a great supporter of the program. And can we have a motion, please, to accept the donation? So moved. By Dave and second by Maria. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. And next, can we have a motion, please, to move superintendent's contract from the agenda to be entertained at a later date? So moved by Dave, second by Jan. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. On to the board budget workshop and as is the tradition we have opening comments by Linda Diagardi our vice president okay thank you Linda thank you welcome to the budget workshop one of the primary roles of a board of education is to develop and adopt an annual budget our job as a board is to ensure that the budget supports our academic programs and the goals of the district we also need to meet all of our state mandates and our contractual ob obligations, and we need to present a budget that will be supported by the majority of our community. We always strive to be fiscally responsible and propose a budget that will show our continued commitment to ensuring that all students acquire the knowledge, skills, and attributes essential for personal excellence in learning, life, and work within our global community. The production of a school budget is a result of extensive work by a dedicated staff. It is a collective effort focused on ensuring financial resources are used efficiently and effectively to reach the mission and desired outcomes of the Webster Central School District. Tonight, we are at our first budget workshop. We will have an update at, of our revenue. We will also hear about state aid and foundation aid. We will also look at the expenditure areas of central services, buildings and grounds, transportation, debt service and benefits. Brian Freeman, the Assistant Superintendent of Business, will facilitate the workshop and questions from the board can be asked at any time. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I'll take Just it away. Ahead. Well, good okay. evening, everybody. Uh, excited to kick off the 1920 uh, budget process here and uh, I just want to reiterate please stop me at any time for any questions um, as we work through um, tonight's workshop nope wrong mouth <laughs> so we're going to take a look at our revenues uh, first focusing on some updates to state aid uh, a summary of some of our revenue categories and then the expenditure areas, pretty much we're going to focus on the operational aspects of the district tonight uh, and get into the instructional on the, um, at the next workshop. So some state aid changes since uh, last we met. Uh, now, this is all based on the governor's data, um, and I imagine they're going to change again, but I just wanted to break down some of those specific areas um, that impact all of our formulas for you tonight and show you as a comparison between 18, 19, 19, 20. Uh, combined wealth ratio, that is the main kind of go-to state indicator for all of our uh, formulas that, that they give us. And what combined wealth ratio is, is in essence, half of it is income wealth, half of it is property wealth. You put it together, that's what you're benchmarked on for your formulas. Uh, state average is a one. And you can see in 1819, we were a 0.9, slightly below it, which is for upstate New York is, is really, really high. Um, in 1920, you guys taking a small dip. Uh, what I can estimate that was from uh, is that um, the property side grew a little bit faster than what we <laughs> actually grew in comparison. So that made a slide. Um, also, uh, into the details of it is uh, free and reduced lunch rate has an impact on the formula. <coughs> we did see a small uptick there, so that would um, bring down our uh, combined wealth ratio. BOCES aid ratio stay the same. So when we talk about how much money we're getting uh, on those expenditure-based aids in a second, you can see BOCES aid ratio stayed the same. Uh, transportation has gone up slightly. Uh, over the over the two years and once again when we get the legislative run I should reiterate this these numbers will probably change again because they'll have more update economics 
um, public access cost, private access cost. You can see those have gone up, so we are actually going to get more aid because um, those rates increased ever so slightly, but they increased and the exemptions went down. So we're getting a higher rate and the amount that their exemption went down between 18, 19 and 1920. So you'll see we'll get more aid, even if all kids stay where they are, same spot, we'll get more aid just on the way the formula is run. Uh, so that will be helpful. And then in the areas of instructional material aid, that's our textbook software library, absolutely no changes to those. Um, still getting $58.25 per student for textbook, $14.98 per student for software, $6.25 per student for library books, and $24.20 times about 0.65. It's a fun, fancy state aid term called ARWADA. It's resident weighted average daily attendance. It's a very complicated formula. It's just really fun to say out loud. Um, so the 2420 just gets reduced. So we're only getting about 65% of the 2420 times all of our enrollment. Um, so no changes to those formulas whatsoever in the governor's proposal uh, between the two years. So just a couple things I wanted to uh, elaborate on since the last time we met and went over everything. Okay, so the numbers for state aid. I have the 1819 Webster budget for you for state aid and then the 1920 governor's budget. And then what, after analyzing those uh, aid factors and ratios and looking at where we're going, a proposed 1920, what I think based off of these early uh, governor numbers, where we should really be um, <clears throat> for our budget planning purposes for 1920. A couple areas to highlight for you. Everything in blue is entirely based on expenditures. So you have to spend it to get it the next year. And then in yellow, it's all based on enrollment. Okay, so those are two distinguishing factors. Foundation aid is based on absolutely nothing um, because they cap it every year and manipulate the formula. Okay, so you see we got our $90,700 in foundation aid, one of the smallest changes um, going forward. Um, so what my variance column is there for you is just the difference between what we budgeted in 1819 and what I'm proposing for 1920 right now as everything is. Okay? Yeah, go. Oh, it's hardware and technology, and then the last line is software, library, and textbook. So some of the, the, where the variances are happening. So because those formula changes that I just talked about with the high cost, private access cost, we are gonna go up, um, all things being uh, equal, neutral. So you'll see an extra $50,000 over last year for the private access cost, uh, about $30,000 more for the uh, high cost access. And just for everybody's reference, high cost access are students that are perhaps in a BOCES program, Private access cost is a student that would be at Norman Howard, uh, Hillside, um, you know, Helpern on Bay Road as a, as a frame of reference of uh, how, how this funds track back. Uh, BOCES we took a, a greater look at, even though the rate stayed the same, remember the governor's proposal is based on what we submitted in August and in September, uh, what we think we're gonna spend. Um, Last year when we did this, 1819, we, we knew we were going to spend more, so I know our aid was going to be more. Same thing for 1920. We're actually going to spend uh, a little bit more in 1819 than we were in 1718 uh, to drive that number. So I'm projecting we're going to go up a quarter million dollars in BOCES aid, uh, which I'm showing here. Uh, building aid, you see a significant uh, increase in building aid, 13%. Almost a million dollars, nine hundred and fourteen thousand. Uh, I want you to pay, you know, focus in on that number, that building aid number, because it's going to come back later in the presentation, um, the, of how that balances with debt service. Uh, uh, so, you know, remember that nine hundred and fourteen thousand dollar increase in building aid. Uh, transportation, we will see an increase in aid. We saw the rate go up, um, but we are also um, seeing an in 
increase in expenditures in transportation, so we'll get more aid. So about $150,000 is where I have that right now. And then very small increases. Uh, the governor's budget was actually fairly accurate, um, actually specifically accurate to what our enrollment was at that time. We have uh, gone up in, in enrollment by about 50 kids, so you're seeing that play out. We're getting more money for hardware, technology, software, library, and textbook going into 1920. Because we get our hardware and most of our technology through BOCES, does that come out of the yellow one or the BOCES? That, the, so um, <laughs> these right here yeah. are being paid for on the BOCES line. Uh, there's not much with the hardware, uh, you can see $140,000. Yes, what we've been doing with that is the microphone systems. Uh, the Red Cat systems, yep. we've been utilizing those state dollars. It seems to work out almost identically. We're on a thing, we're uh, on a plan for that. We're, we're generally using um, the money that the state gives us for the hardware uh, for that purpose. I see. And we have a very small software, that small software state allotment. We do one or two of our operating softwares through there. The rest are all in that BOCES, BOCES. larger yeah, line. that's what I thought. So any yeah. of the instructional stuff, like the RAS Kids, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Splash Math, all those things that we purchase mm -hmm. um, is coming through that BOCES aid. BOCES line, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, any questions on, on the state aid? Like I said, we'll look at this again once we get the legislature run, uh, hopefully by April 1st, and it gives me another month to look, what are we really gonna spend <clears throat> through June 30th to get a more accurate uh, projection of what we're getting for aid. So take a look at some of the other revenue areas. Sales tax, uh, we're doing, I give you a three year look, or a two year look back and then a proposed this year. No changes in sales tax uh, whatsoever uh, for next year. to stay relatively flat there. Um, state aid, we just went over, but you mm -hmm. see those two numbers correlate. Rental of property, no changes there. Uh, a very large 25% increase in interest revenue, uh, but it's all relative. Uh, to the actual size of how much money we're making on our bank accounts. Right. You no, know, we've been, uh, I've talked about this a couple times, being more aggressive with our investments mm -hmm. and what we have. So projecting that we will see an increase in interest revenue uh, for next year. Uh, payments in lieu of taxes, our pilots staying flat. Any miscellaneous revenues, those are all our user fees, uh, continuing education fees staying uh, relatively stable um, for 1920 using the same amount of appropriated reserves and appropriated fund balances, no changes there, and no changes to the tax levy limit from when I presented to you earlier in February. That is still 3.19%. Um, uh, there was no structural changes, uh, so what I reported to the comptroller is what um, we presented in February as well. That maintains everybody is uh, eligible come fall for uh, the rebate program. Good. Any questions on the other revenue areas? Okay. Uh, so let's get into some of our expenditure areas now. <coughs> Central services, what is it? It's, it's the back office, um, the board of education costs, the district meeting, superintendent's office, finance, personnel, insurance, uh, school association dues, any refunds, judgments against the district. But one of the largest uh, parts of our central budget is the BOCES administrative budget. So our share of paying into the basics of Monroe One BOCES is the largest part of this budget. Um, and we're about just a shade under 20% of the entire Monroe One administrative budget. I think we're up to 19.5% now of, uh, of the entire east side. So just take a look at some of the changes of what's going on in these in these areas uh, for next year. Uh, we have our salary increases. Um, supplies, very small increase um, of $1,625. Uh, what's going up? Uh, a lot of that has to do with HR and their recruiting efforts. Mm -hmm. um, they're purchasing more consumables. Uh, next year, the plan is for HR to go to six different recruitment fairs, so a lot more um, little pens, little uh, papers that say, don't forget about Webster. Um, so a little increase in the supply budget there for them uh, for 1920. Um, <clears throat> contractuals, you see, going up 4.52%. What's hap happening there? 
uh, association dues and fees um, are going up this year. Um, overall, it's only $29,375 <coughs> for all the associations, but also with uh, our contractuals there, we're talking um, our mail contract, um, postage, things like that are, are increasing uh, as well. So see uh, increase there. Insurance uh, claims are going up, so we're uh, anticipating a 5% jump in our liability insurance um, moving forward in 1920. Then our BOCE services, 1.67% uh, increase over uh, 18, 19, 19, 20, 32,000. Uh, a large chunk of that is the BOCES admin. The 20, uh, $25,000 of it is BOCES admin. Uh, but also, as part of this right here, we purchase our HR software, our financial software package, our professional development package, all are part of this budget. Those software costs uh, have gone up as well, and that makes up the difference, a little over $7,000 in those software costs mm -hmm. um, heading into 1920. <coughs> Brian, for most of the software costs, do you pay monthly licensing fees? We pay I know yearly. there's kind of a shift where you don't purchase uh, it's, products it's outright anymore. Because we do it through BOCES, it's, uh, it's, it's some are paid up front 100% come July 1. Uh, some are spread out over a 10-month period where BOCES will pay it for us up front, and then they bill us on a 10-month period. Mm -hmm. uh, but then... You know, there's support with that. There's BOCES people um, that, if we're having a problem with WinCap, our financial yeah, software, we and, call them, yeah. ask them for help. So beyond the software, there's also some, it comes through as a software charge, but there's also some human charges to that mm -hmm. through BOCES that get uh, come back our way too. So it's not just, all right, I'm, like if you went to Staples and bought that software package off, it's this much. Well, when we buy it through BOCES, it's this much. Plus, you get part of that person to help support it right. if anything yeah, happens. Training. Thank you. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what does that look like? I just want—I I, um, I love to point this slide out because what is the big part of our our back office operations are paying for those BOCES administrative services. Uh, so, um, just up uh, one hundred fourteen thousand eight hundred twelve dollars. Uh, going into next year. Uh, so buildings and grounds budget. With me tonight is Mr. Cunningham, our uh, Director of Facilities. Um, he's here to help answer other questions. I just want to give a quick overview of the department for you, of how many employees we have, um, how much our buildings are to maintain, uh, what we're working with as far as acres of land, and what our process is. Um, you know, all requests for next year submitted uh, by December Christmas uh, break to, to Mr. Cunningham. And he, since I've started, he's always prioritized um, for Webster these three main areas, health and safety, program and curriculum, and aesthetics. Um, so, you know, I have to commend the buildings and ground staff. They always go above and beyond. Um, phenomenal employees, and they really uh, take great pride in their work, and I think it shows throughout the district. I'm not just saying that because we made a move a bunch of stuff for us upstairs <laughs> two weeks ago. So, but Maybe more than once. Yeah. yeah. We heard. How many total yeah. trips was it, Blake? 28. 28 total <laughs> trips with the trucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, and we, uh, we, we are surplusing quite a bit of stuff, too, as part of the process. Some real old stuff and um, got down into the... Um, Bowels of the basement. So, what do you know? What what do we really need to hold on? What do we need to keep? Yeah. So, uh, we brought a lot of cluttered. stuff with us. Uh, I don't, uh, hopefully, it won't be 28 trips Coming back. back yeah. You know, I think we can find homes for some of the stuff that came over, and <laughs> not over here. Anything uh, you'd like to add, Blake? To uh, good. Okay. <laughs> a lot of went through his mind. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so a little if I, year. If I could just interject yeah. one go. thing, in the learning walks and every everywhere we go in this district, there isn't a time where we don't hear repeatedly the job that buildings and grounds does for all of us. Um, nothing goes unnoticed, and nothing goes unappreciated. So, uh, enormous thank you to you and your staff. Well, thank you. We really do have a great staff. And, you know, puts kids first. Thank you. So just to highlight a, a few things that Blaine and the staff have done 
in the matter of months this year, they transitioned an entire wing of Schlegel Road to an, a new pro the new OWL program, uh, including installing mm -hmm. new doors, um, new, new room layouts, uh, new furniture, new cabinetry, um, new access controls, new parking lot, new walkway, um, all in time for school to start. Um, you know, in the summer. So to me, that was one of the most amazing things that they were able to accomplish um, this year. Uh, while also installing 165 new Dell boards throughout the district, um, multiple key card accesses, uh, although there's one still hanging out there I think we have to do, Mr. Gamina. Uh, <laughs> could you get to work today? Door so, number three. Could you get to work today? <laughs> I got to, yeah, somebody let me in. <laughs> uh, uh, if you notice, a lot of our parking lots are a lot brighter now, uh, converting to LED lights. Uh, and the geotech program and B&G working closely together uh, for many, many um, programs, which has been great because uh, they've done projects for buildings and grounds and doing projects uh, for all of us in the district. So it's <coughs> been a tremendous, tremendous benefit. So what's on the horizon uh, for buildings and grounds? So every year we do a $100,000 capital outlay project. These are very small projects. Um, we put them in high needs because um, the state turns around. One year we get 75% of the aid back the following year. So what do, you know, when we're sitting down as a team, what really needs to be done? And a, a testament to Blaine on this one, um, was the aquatic center lights for two reasons. One, if you've noticed, it's kind of getting dark in there um, because all the, some of the lights are starting to fail um, and they're not easy to get to mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it needed to be done. Um, it's not one of those areas that you think of a lot, but there are a lot of lights over there. Uh, so we're, we're, we need to replace the lights and what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a complete LED conversion. So we're gonna use $100,000 of this capital outlay project. Fortunately, the lights are going to be more than $100,000. So we're just going to leverage that $100,000, then we're going to use um, the extra, uh, which when we bid, we'll find out what it is, is going to come from the normal repair budget um, that we have in buildings and grounds um, for next year. So unfortunately, we'll probably have to shut the pool down for a little bit of time next year to get those done uh, safely. Uh, and securely, unless anybody wants to go and dive really, really high um, into the deep end uh, for when they when they bring the lifts in up there. Okay. But you know, tons of electric savings with that. Yeah. Um, Excellent. So let's look at uh, buildings and grounds numbers here. What's going on? Uh, and I'll just point out that you know you see there's only two increases um, from 1819 to 1920. One being in salaries and two being in BOCES services, everything else totally flat, no increases for next year. So overall, a 2.9% increase. Let's get into what's, what's really driving this budget. So salaries, we got a couple things going on. Cost for substitutes um, is going up and our summer help, minimum wage. They're all on minimum wage. So that's about an 8% increase uh, right there. Also in the salaries, besides the normal, um, excuse me, normal uh, contractual increases for all the uh, B&G unit members is, there's some extra hours in there um, that is making this l larger. Why are there some extra hours in there? Um, no notably for overtime, because we're gonna be in construction all next year. And our buildings and ground staff with construction going on at all hours is always on call. So. Um, as we're planning and looking at this year, we know there's going to be an increase probably in hours to our staff. Um, I, I won't, it's not an extra FTE. It's not an extra person. It's everybody who's still currently here. Uh, but we're, we think, you know, not that we're going to overwork them, but there's going to be plenty of opportunities uh, for the staff to earn overtime. So there, there is some additional uh, hours and differential built into this budget uh, in the salary range for them. Okay. And then secondly, um, one of the, the BOCES cost increase, the $10,000 is, uh, Blaine and I have been talking this about for about two years now um, around health and safety. And we currently uh, buy into a BOCES coaster for health and safety, 
you know, we have them on call of something. Uh, we, we could use some testing here, or we got this issue, what's your opinion? Um, and so one of the things that two years ago with the state mandated lead testing, and you know, we're now working with an environmental group for that. We have our uh, two staff members that are continuously going around assisting with that. What, what else can we kind of be a little bit more proactive with health and safety um, across the district? And so Blaine has been a big uh, believer and a big proponent for uh, adding this BOCES COSER, uh, has a great person. So now we're gonna have uh, that person dedicated in Webster through BOCES, totally aidable, uh, one day a week, uh, being proactive, working inside of our buildings to say, you know what, you can make this change, it's gonna improve your environment or health and safety wise, or you know, and really attack and get us being more proactive in certain areas. So we're excited uh, to include that in the budget <coughs> for 1920 um, going forward. So small increase, uh, cause we already uh, pay for a large part of the coaster. Uh, some things that we think we're, we're gonna possibly be saving, um, you know, we have a retainer for our architects and engineers, but you know, I think we'll be able to shift those all to the project if anything comes up. Um, phone costs continue to come down, um, so we don't, because since we're all voice over uh, IP, so infrastructure reducing, and with project being done at Spry, uh, takes out a lot of the blacktop repair we were planning on doing, uh, takes it out of the normal B&G um, and puts it in the capital. Okay. So percentage breakdown, B&G is about 6.6% 6 .6 of the yearly budget. Uh, majority is salaries. Um, overall, the budget's $11.6 million. Okay. Uh, so one of the things we wanted also to do is do a comparison. Uh, how does our operations and maintenance costs compare to for this point, the Monroe One BOCES. Uh, and so I think it's gonna be uh, an eye-opening when we talk debt service as well, of how well we use our dollars when it comes to operations and maintenance. Uh, so this is based on 2017 state data that I was able to pull. Um, and the average percent of budget is uh, 6.45. Um, and Webster is 6.7. So we're slightly above average, right, right there, which I think is, is pretty good considering we have 11 buildings, uh, our own B&G facility and our own bus garage to maintain, uh, and also being the largest district um, on the east side. So we're right, th we're right about there on the average when, when we talk about um, operations in uh, buildings and grounds. So you know, keep that in the back of your mind when we look at debt service. Remember where we're at. And I've always gotten the impression that um, our buildings and grounds take on many projects that perhaps other districts would roll into a capital improvement. That is also a very, very true point. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on uh, buildings and grounds? Okay. Uh, transportation. Uh, so we're continuously advertising for drivers. Um, as as unfortunately, right now, advertising, our number one uh, <coughs> the number one advertiser is the buses parked in front of the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some snow there right now that's kind of block <laughs> preventing us, but as soon as uh, snow clears, those buses are going back out there. Mm -hmm. That's their number one recruitment tool. One thing we just started doing um, within like the last month in response to what several other districts are doing is now offering paid training. Most notably, our number one competitor to the south, um, mm -hmm. Penfield, is doing paid training, so we felt, you know, we had to keep up with it, because we're all in the same sure. recruiting pool. And so we're offering some paid training in response to what other districts are doing. And uh, is the state trying to get some other locations for training, I heard? That is also out there, but, but on it, you know, <laughs> just today, uh, I've, many of you are aware several other districts are sending their drivers to Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania yes. to get their license. And so we, a lot of people have been promoting that, other districts are, uh, are hopping on. I honestly think it's gonna, uh, the rumors coming out of um, Albany right now is it's gonna backfire, that they know that districts are doing that and they're gonna clo close the loophole mm -hmm. in the law this year yep. and prevent districts from doing that now, which will just exacerbate the problem. Mm -hmm. We're in a, a fairly good place for staffing. Um, 
So we're, we actually have been, this has been a theme of last year too, we have expanded uh, the department. We've pulled back some BOCES runs. Rather than making that, all right, send it to BOCES um, to do, we're, we're doing that in-house. And we are very excited, you know, with the capital project planning underway because the facility does need some improvements. Okay. So transportation, we're able to hold everything flat besides salaries. Uh, so why are salaries going up? Uh, 4.5 percent everything else is staying um, staying where it is so I'll just point out the BOCES contract transportation that's a very large part of our budget that hasn't changed in three years because of that mindset of not sending those runs there so as their rate increases are going up we're able to hold flat because we're pulling one two runs back uh, every year we created actually five new runs for the OWL program this year mm -hmm. that historically we would have sent to BOCES. So we're hiring more drivers, so that's why you see there's more drivers going into the salaries versus costs going down here to BOCES. Mm -hmm. So it's one or the other. We think long term it makes more sense for them to be our drivers, Webster drivers driving Webster kids to a Webster program versus a Monroe One uh, bus. Also in that non-instructional salaries is the paid training. We're going to see we're increasing costs there. But something we, I think, is a necessity that we have to do. We don't have too many monitors, probably a dozen. They're on minimum wage. It does uptake a little bit, but not, the impact is more on the new runs that we've created. Any questions on those transportation numbers? So a visual of where that transportation is, you can see the two largest is our salaries, and then BOCES is our second largest transportation expenditure area. Um, and, re and then fuel, you see we don't spend much on insurance for our buses, it's a very small part of this budget, and the contractuals and the uh, supplies for repairing buses, very small parts of the budget as well. We, we do a nice job um, at 90, I think we passed our last DOT with 99% of the buses, so that is an amazing number. Mm -hmm. Now, where are we in comparison to other Monroe One districts with our transportation budget? So the average, 4.6%. We're slightly above that at 4.8. We're pretty much smack dab in the middle of um, Monroe One. And this is uh, 2017 data as well that I, that I was able to grab uh, that has been reported to the state. So we're right there, and we have the largest fleet on the east side, so about 200 buses. Um, with 167 drivers as of the other day and uh, mechanics and office staff. Um, so we're right there, right at the middle, right at the, mm -hmm. right at the average. Any questions on transportation and, and going into next year, 1920? Okay. Our bus proposition for 1920 um, fairly standard, a little bit l <coughs> more than last year, uh, slightly more. We're buying nine big buses, um, six smaller buses, looking to um, a little bit more flexibility with the smaller buses. Those help with some of the specialized special education mm -hmm. runs, so we're looking to turn that over a little bit more this year. And then one uh, large bus that also has a wheelchair unit available to it. Um, that will provide us more flexibility. Um, especially in out of district runs. You could run the big bus to do a private parochial and then it could go run and pick up a special ed student. Mm -hmm. So it just gives you more uh, flexibility if um, we're replacing that bus. So rather than buy normal 10 buses like we do every year, we're doing nine and one specialized large bus for 1920. You said total purchase price, but 1.6 million. You said that over last year's overall price, that's uh, $62,000 more. Um, is generally tied to the wheelchair uh, bus being included. But we borrow that over five years, so it's, it's split up and becomes part of our debt service. And will this be like a separate proposition on the budget vote? Correct. This, yeah. is, this is, uh, yeah. will be proposition number one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I believe in a couple of weeks we will have the resolution for uh, the board to adopt okay. uh, in every March. So debt service, this, I, I kind of want to pull a couple things together. So uh, we have two years of debt service. Um, debt service, I've broken down for you. Construction, 
and bus borrowing so you can see what's going on. You see the increase um, with our debt for next year. One thing I want to point out, what we borrow for buses in 1920 does not actually impact our 1920 budget because it's on a one-year delay. It doesn't hit. So the buses we're going to buy now, we'll get them in the fall. We don't actually pay for them until 2021, the way this cycle works. So these are, so it's on a, about a one-year delay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, so if you want to know, oh, why, that $60,000 increase, where is it? You know, just kind of looks like it lines up, but it's totally unintentional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I wanted to point out the $862,825. It's a large increase in debt service. But if we go all the way back, and I'm going to go back to revenue on the state side, what did we have a large increase in? In, in building, building aid. aid. So as the debt goes up, yeah. the aid goes up with it. So it's kind of an offset. Mm -hmm. So if you'd remove those from the budget, it, it, it's like a net, it's actually we're getting more aid more than what our debt is actually yeah. going up uh, on construction. So I just want to make sure I pointed that out to everybody that we try really hard to line those two up to keep the difference between debt and building aid, you know, stable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? All right, and then um, our transfer to capital, that's the $100,000 project to the Aquatic Center at Trader. And this 1819, uh, I think April, we looking at Plank North? Yes. April to finish Plank North was this year's $100,000 project. So, um, you know, as soon as this cycle is over this summer, we'll start thinking about what's going to be the next one. Okay, so you see then the transfer to federal fund, that's for summer programs. That's a transfer to another fund, not the general fund, that supports summer programs. Okay, so no changes on those transfers, but you see the debt going up. Small increase on the bus, um, but you see the, the building aid matching the, mm -hmm. the bus or the uh, construction. Any questions on that? Okay. So... How do we compare with the rest of the Monroe One? We spend the least amount of our budget on debt compares to everybody else, um, by far. So, going back to your point, Jen, which is totally, we didn't plan that at all. <laughs> <laughs> you would think, you know, it would be in reverse. So right. our buildings and grounds would be way off the charts because we'd be spending more there rather than closer to the average if we were doing this. Um, and this is based on 2017. So you can see the fluctuations. We, I think we do a, it just hammers home the point that we do a lot with our buildings and grounds dollars mm -hmm. and we're pretty efficient on our capital projects um, going forward as a district. Great. I do appreciate putting together that information. Yeah. It's good to benchmark yeah. other districts just yep. to yep. make sure you Unfor know. You know, it's 2017. Yeah. Um, it's the last poll I could yeah, get sure. from the state sure. that had that comparison so yeah. but I, I'll, I'll start including that yeah. Yeah, that's very helpful mm -hmm. I appreciate it too so yeah. Yeah. the visual is good yeah. so comparison mm -hmm. any questions on the on the <laughs> part of the narrative any questions on the debt service and you know I bounce back and forth somewhat quickly perhaps on how the things are tied together okay and if you really wanted, it, I could tie it together, see how we get more building aid than we have debt this year. That's why on the tax cap, it's smaller than the year before. <laughs> so that's the reason why. He's going to get really excited over He's there. He's such a budget yeah. nerd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lucky. <laughs> and actually, this is the first year I think I could get excited to talk about benefits, too. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we have actually some really great news as we transition to the benefits portion of our evening. It's 25% of the budget. It's the second largest portion after salaries. <clears throat> but so what's increasing? The only, you know, one of the main things that's increasing is our, our FICA costs, our Social Security and Medicare, because that's tied directly to salaries. And when minimum wage for several hundred employees is going up 8%, that's the, that's the secondary place we're feeling it more than anywhere uh, is on FICA, more than on our pensions, uh, because those rates are coming down for ERS and uh, TRS. Uh, more, it would impact ERS more than anything. But it's really on, on FICA, so you're going to see a spike there. What's decreasing? Teacher retirement system has a drop from last year. All of our other benefit lines, flat. And I really say the move to the deductible plan for four units made a huge impact as I was sitting down working on this benefits, uh, uh, on the cost increases as we were focusing on this. So I always like to add this slide to show you some historical of how the pension systems have been. Uh, you notice the last three years of the teacher retirement system, we went down, we'll back up, down, you know, little instability there. I would have, you know, preferred to see a smaller step increase rather than a, a large drop, then go back up the very next year, you know. Um, but the ERS, uh, you see they've done a very gradual uh, step down as the stock market returns have come, they probably could actually have dropped it down a little bit more. They're, they might be being a little too conservative, but just that's some historical knowledge, uh, knowledge for everybody of really what have our, where have our rates gone. I always think it's a nice slide to, to benchmark back to, you know, hark you back to 20 years and look at, look at where it was there. And this is as a percentage of overall salaries. So any questions on, on where the pensions are? And then in dollars, where, where were we in 0203 compared to what we're projecting for 1920? Um, you know, the TRS one's kind of gone from here to here, which is helpful. And then ERS is also gone linear. Okay. One of the other huge chunks of our benefits budget is workers' comp. Uh, we've actually stabilized that the last couple of years, um, probably because we, uh, as a consortium, have turned that have turned that around. How did we turn it around? Well, by jumping our rates from 1415 all the way to 1617. So we all pay for it as a consortium, all for one, one for all. Um, so uh, just want to highlight workers' comp. You see, that's one we created a reserve for because we we're like, oh, is that going to keep going? and going and so we want to have something to prepare for that. Okay. So health care, what a difference a year makes. Uh, our value plan, which is base for uh, a lot of our employees, very small increase of only 1%. Our retiree plans actually decreased um, wow. for 2019, which was jaw dropping because when was the last time anybody's ever said, your health care plan is going down. <laughs> you know, so we saw, especially on the over 65 plans, saw a, a savings there, which we were not expecting. And so, the deductible uh, had an impact on cost increase avoidances. So, you know, very positive year for benefits. Still want to show you where we've been historically for health care. Brian. Brian? Yeah. So why did it go down? Do you, do you have an idea? Or was it the claims were? So all of our uh, 65 and older plans um, also were subject to the Affordable Care Act taxes. Oh, okay. So th those years where they were jumping, those fell off. And so Excellus, um, man, they didn't need to, to pull in as much to help offset those. Okay, so that's what it was. I also try, th I think they were trying to be more competitive in the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, sure. Is probably the real underlying <coughs> factor. Um, competition's a good thing. And yeah. We were more so than the Affordable Care Act changes. I think that was a driving factor. Okay. Good. Okay. And then just historical, I, I add this one uh, just to show you, hey, my chart's making a kind of right-hand turn down this year. Yeah. Instead of going up. I'm kind of turning, so I'm kind of excited about that as a budget nerd. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then benefits, you see the pieces where everything uh, is, you know, health care is the largest chunk, um, you know, followed by, you know, TRS and FICA dueling it out to see who's going to be number two. 
um, on a year-to-year -year basis where we spend those benefit dollars. Okay. And then here's a line by line for you. Um, go right to the bottom, spoil alert, we're actually saving a half a percent on our benefits budget compared to 18, 19. Um, so TRS is a 10% reduction over 18, 19. Uh, you see the FICA increase, small increase on our life insurance on the premium there uh, that is available. And then health insurance, 1.41% increase. Um, I've never seen that in my entire career. Um, so, yay. Uh, and then everything else we've held flat, dental, um, you know, the buyouts, the HRA plans, FSA plan, administrative costs there are flat. So we're actually saving half a percent on the benefits budget from 18, 19 to 19, 20. Okay. So how did we compare? Because we could pull what every, everybody spends. Um, this is based on 2017 again as a percentage of budget. Uh, we're at 26.65, average was 26.85, so we're just, we're, we're, we're at the average, you know, we're so, right there in the middle. Yeah, one thing that we should be aware of, this is 17 data, mm -hmm. so we now have negotiated contracts that have a different base plan to the, Correct. Deduct, to, to the deductible, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I, I do expect down. that you know, our, our yellow, that yellow block. That yellow should, to move yeah. To the right. And we buy, and so on east side, we buy far and away have the most retirees um, on those retiree plans compared to everybody else. Okay. Um, so in, there'll be two years by the time that data gets caught up, mm -hmm. you know, you'll see that, that shift. So in summary, uh, just to kind of sum it up for everybody, revenues, what we proposed tonight was uh, $177,147,627. All these operational expenditure areas tonight were $80.5 million. Um, so we're building towards, you know, putting our, two, our formula together of making the revenues equal the expenditures. And we'll have the second half in two weeks when we look at the instructional side um, and what's, what's going on there. So like next meeting, uh, we'll do a state aid update if there's anything to share. Um, we'll look at all those instructional areas, our community education, and any other updates as necessary. And anything else that perhaps, you know, you might want to see or look at too as well. Any, any uh, questions hanging out there? Should we go around the room? Is everybody okay? You want to just jump in? I love the idea of the um, BOCES coaster service as a consultant because especially the job that B&G does here mm -hmm. to find any more savings or yeah. um, and that's one, you know, And that's it's one of those things that always kind of got pushed down on the list. I mean, because his Blaine's phone rings all the time for everything. Um, you know, Saturday night, there's a problem with parking. Um, you know, lights are out. So, you know, he's the most accessible person in the district. So things do get pushed down and always happen to be like the preventative stuff, you know, instead of playing catch up. So now there's a little bit more help there to, to, to do that. Yeah. I think that's a great opportunity. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you so much right. for all the effort that goes Thanks, into friend. this. We no problem. I'll yeah. really appreciate it. You can see the passion. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we did. It's evident. <laughs> What? <laughs> you were a math teacher, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. With that, can we have a motion to adjourn, please? I'll make that motion. Sue, second by Maria. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone, for being here. All right. Have a good night.